Hey guys, so I have an idea for a little game for us today. I'm going to describe a moral philosopher, and you guys are going to tell me whether you think his position implies moral relativism. So first, we need to make sure we're all on the same page about what moral relativism means. And I think having two terms under our belt is really going to help with that. First term is subjective. So here's an example of something subjective. If it's 72 degrees outside, and I say, hey, that feels hot, and you say, hey, that feels cold, well, both of us are expressing an opinion, but neither, you can't really say either one of us is wrong. Uh, I have a different appraisal than you, that doesn't mean that um, your appraisal is more true than mine. So, it's not, I mean, there's no matter of fact being discussed here, we're just giving our opinions. So, for example, uh, people in Texas might tend to think that 72 degrees is really cold, and people in Alaska might tend to think that 72 degrees is rather warm. Different individuals and different cultures have different opinions. It varies from person to person and culture to culture. But although we have different opinions, no opinion of this kind is true or false. So this is an example of something subjective. And if you think morality is a lot like this, then you are a proponent of moral relativism. So let's contrast this with uh, the term objective. Let's go again with temperature. If, uh, if I take a guess that it's 70 degrees outside, and then you guess that it's 72 degrees outside, we both have our opinions about what the temperature is, but one of our opinions might be closer to truth than the other one. So if we go outside and look at the thermometer and it says it's 72 degrees, then it turns out that you were right and I was factually wrong. So statements like, it is 72 degrees outside, are true or false, and they're true or false whether or not, um, regardless of what our opinions, beliefs, or attitudes are. So that's an example of something objective. And if you think morality is a lot like that, then you are not a moral relativist. So basically, everybody I know has opinions about morality. If you think that all there are are different individuals and cultures with various opinions, and that none of those opinions are objectively wrong, then you're a moral relativist. If, on the other hand, you think that although we have different opinions, some of those opinions might be objectively wrong, then you're not a moral relativist. So now that we understand what moral relativism is, let's go ahead and look at our philosopher. And the philosopher I want to look at today, his name is Aristotle. Just by mentioning his name, some of you are probably going to already have an opinion about whether or not he advocates moral relativism, you rascals. But uh, for the rest of us, let's go ahead and look at what Aristotle has to say. I'll go ahead and write it on the board for you. All right, I draw pretty fast, huh? All right, so this is uh, Aristotle's doctrine of the mean here. And basically, we have two extremes written on the board. Go ahead and zoom you in here. All right, so on one end, we have recklessness, which is a, a vice. This is a bad thing, something that doesn't contribute to the good life. And on the other end, we have uh, cowardliness. Again, this is a bad thing for Aristotle. So let's give an example of each. Uh, let's say you're in a battle, and your uh, commander tells you to retreat because you guys are out of ammo, you're outnumbered, it's time to get out of there. And everybody retreats except you. Instead, you, unarmed, charge the enemy. Aristotle would say you have a deficiency here, that you're being reckless, and it's a vice. Um, you have a deficiency of fear and an abundance of overconfidence, uh, and that's a bad thing. An example of cowardliness would be, uh, let's say you and your friends are all out, and your friends start bullying somebody. You know it's wrong, and you want to tell them it's wrong, but you get crippled by fear, and you end up not doing the right thing, not intervening and helping out with the kid who's being bullied. Um, that would be an example of cowardliness. Again, a vice for Aristotle. So he thinks what you need is to have the perfect balance of fear and confidence, something that's neither cowardly nor reckless, and this is something that he's going to call courage. And this is where it's about to get really interesting. So, what makes this part of the philosophy so interesting is that the perfect balance of uh, confidence and fear that leads to this courageous action might be different for me than it is for you. And here we have a video example that's going to drive this point home. Alright, so in this clip you saw a homeless man being beat up and you saw a woman standing by not intervening. So for the sake of analogy, let's imagine that this woman had a child and let's call her Sarah. So for Sarah, the mean, the point in between um, courage and recklessness that is ideal, sorry, cowardliness and recklessness, it's going to be right about here. It's going to be Sarah. 
Reason being is because uh, the attacker was bigger than her, he was violent, and uh, she's primarily focused on keeping her kids safe. So for her, the mean, the courageous action might not be to intervene. So now let's take a look at one more clip. On my sidewalk, huh? Out of here. Go. Go. All right, so let's call the, uh, this man Jake, and let's assume that he is not a security guard and is actually a police officer. If that was the case, his meme might be uh, right about here. So he has backup, so he has um, an advantage in numbers. He has weapons training as well as weapons. For him, uh, the correct action, the courageous action, might be to intervene and help out this uh, homeless man who's being beaten. Uh, and, oh, just for the record, that is a prank video. It's an attempt uh, to get people to intervene, to see if people, how people will respond when the homeless man is getting beaten. No homeless man are actually hurt in the making of this video. Um, and a link will be down if you want to see the whole video. It's pretty interesting. But uh, back to the point, what's really interesting about this is that what is courageous is different for Sarah than it is for Jake. The mean is different for different individuals. Um, and the courageous action is also different for different individuals. Even though the situation is almost identical. So what I want you guys to tell me is do you think that this implies moral relativism or not? If you think it does imply moral relativism, click here. And if you think it does not imply moral relativism, click here.